program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Mama. <laughs> now at last, the gelatin dessert that gives you all the flavor. It's the new Jell-O, the gelatin dessert that keeps all of its full original flavor no matter how long it remains in the package. Up until now, gelatin desserts constantly faded in flavor while waiting to be used, lost much of their real taste and tingle. But the new Jell-O is different. Today, Jell-O's deep, vivid richness is locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles where time can't touch it. Jell-O loses nothing on its way to you. It comes out of the package as rich and full-flavored as it went in. Just prove it for yourself. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no heavy, fruity aroma, no sign of escaping flavor. It's there in all its thrilling goodness. Order several packages tomorrow. And look for the big red letters on the box so that you're sure it's the one and only Jell-O. In Jell-O, the flavor never goes away. We put it in and it's there to stay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to turn the clock back to last Friday night and show you what happened when Jack and the rest of our gang went out and celebrated Halloween. The time, 7.30 Friday evening. The place, Jack's house in Beverly Hills. Take it away! I don't want to set the world on fire! Rochester. I just want to go where I can get to! Rochester, stop complaining in rhythm and help me get into my Halloween costume. The gang will be here any minute. Hand me those horns. Here you are. Pardon the ignorance, boss, but what character are you struggling to convey? <laughs> my costume is very obvious. I've got on red underwear, a long tail, horns, and I'm carrying a pitchfork. Now, who am I? The man from the finance company. <laughs> I am not. I'm the devil. Now, hand me that mirror. Here you are. Thanks. No, I don't like this effect. These darn horns keep slipping, slipping over to one side. The horns are all right. It's your toupee that slips. <laughs> Something wrong there. I don't know why I picked out a devil costume anyway. Of course, I bought this pair of horns. I should use them. Why don't you put one of them on your nose and go with a rhinoceros? <laughs> No, I can't do that. Phil Harris is coming as Frank Buck, and he'd shoot me. <laughs> he'd love the excuse. I wonder if this tail is too long here. He was at the door, Rochester. Yes, sir. Come in. I could have done that myself. <laughs> Rochester, when I tell you... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Mary, this is Halloween. I thought you were going to dress up tonight. Where's your costume? I've got it on. I'm Pocahontas. Pocahontas? In a mink coat? John Smith was nice to me. <laughs> oh, you're a wampum digger, eh? <laughs> well, at least stick a feather in your hair. Make it believable. Say, what do you think of my outfit, Mary? Don't I look like the devil? Always. <laughs> I mean my costume. I'm supposed to be Satan. Can't you see my horn? Well, straighten up. You look like a toad. <laughs> Who ever heard of a red toad? Yeah. Hey, boss, I'm going to a masquerade party tonight myself. Yeah, Rochester, what are you going to be? I'm going to close my eyes and go with the Smith Brothers' cough drop. <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea. Say, Rochester, why don't you keep one eye open and go as a period? <laughs> How's that? I better keep both eyes open. My lady friend's a rover. <laughs> All right, do as you please. Jack, what are we going to do tonight? Where are we going? I got it all figured out. Listen to this. First, we'll go to Claudette Colbert's house, and then I'll take a piece of soap and write, Claudette loves Jack all over her window. Oh, you did that last year, and she came out and wrote, Jack who? 
Well, this time she'll know, Jack, who. When Claudette comes out of the house, I've got to grab her and give her a kiss. Now, there's only one guy kisses like Benny. You don't have to tell me, Dad Lip. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to give you a good jab with my pitchfork if you don't look out. Well, anyway, after we live Claudette. Come in, come in. Well, look what's hopping through the door. For Pete's sake, what an outfit. Hello, Jack. Mary. Hello, John. What are you supposed to be? Why can't you tell? I'm a kangaroo. Well, sure enough, you certainly look realistic, John, with those long ears sticking up in that great big pouch. <laughs> but see... Say, I thought Dennis was coming with you. Where is the kid? Peekaboo! <laughs> well, I'll be darned, a baby kangaroo. <laughs> Here, climb. Uh, climb out, kid. Here, I'll help you. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Imagine coming as a little kangaroo. You know, I was going to come as a floor lamp. A floor lamp? Yeah, but when I screwed the bulbs in my ears, they wouldn't light up. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Huh? Maybe I ought to see a doctor. <laughs> Dennis, you're not supposed to light up. You know, Mary, someday I'll have to have a talk with that kid. By the way, Jack, isn't Phil going to join us tonight? Yeah, he'll drop by as soon as he finishes night school. Say, Dennis, while we're waiting around for him, let's hear that song you're going to do on the program Sunday. Yeah, get over to the piano, kid. Okay. Oh, say, Rochester, did you ask our boarder, Mr. Billingsley, to tune the piano? He's very good at it, you know. We should have never let him monkey with it, boss. Oh, what's he done now? That man's crazy. He cleaned the piano keys with dental floors. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Billingsley must think he's a dentist again. It's a fine way to clean piano keys. He said the black ones were decayed, so he pulled them out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He broke eight needles trying to give the leg Novocaine. <laughs> well, it's my own fault, I guess. Well, do the best you can, Dennis. Go ahead. Wait a minute, I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, hello, Phil. Are you still at night school? We're waiting for you. What? She's keeping you after school. What happened, Jack? Well, Phil got a zero in spelling, so he gave the teacher a hot foot. <laughs> Look, Phil, is your teacher anywhere near the phone? Well, well, tell her your father wants to talk to her. Yeah, yeah, your father. What are you going to do, Jack? I'm going to pretend to be Phil's father. You know, I'll talk like an old rube. Well, you got the right underwear for us. <laughs> Quiet now, don't mix me up. Hello? Oh, hello, miss. This is Twitch Harris, senior, talking. <laughs> now, look, ma'am, I got to see my boy Philip right away, so I wish you'd let him off tonight. I'll write you a note explaining everything. I said I'd write you a note. <laughs> That's a good one. What'd she say? She wants to know how come I can write and Phil can <laughs> Thanks a lot, ma'am. Say, what are you doing later? <laughs> well, you can't shoot a man for trying. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, it's all set, fellas. Phil will be here pretty soon. You know, that teacher sure had a sweet voice. I could kind of go for her. But, Jack, you don't even know what she looks like. Anything he gets is gravy. <laughs> I don't know about that, sister. Sing, Dennis. See this pitchfork, Mary? You're going to get it. Now, you like Why have I the feeling stars 
are my feelings. I know I am so to you. When you smile at me, I hear gypsy violins. When you dance with me, I'm in heaven. When the music begins, I can see the sun when it's raining, hiding every cloud from my view. And why do I see rainbows when you're in? Dennis, that song ought to go over swell Sunday. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Can I have something to eat? Yeah, I'm hungry, too. Haven't you got any sandwiches? I've got donuts and cider. That's all you're supposed to have on Halloween. Uh, bring in the donuts, Rochester. They're right here, boss. Oh, yes. Here, have a donut, Mary. They're nice and fresh. I made them myself. Jeepers, look at the size of the holes you got in them. <laughs> Never mind. They look like ladies' garters. <laughs> Quiet, will you? Oh, what she said. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> no use waiting. I gotta have a talk with that kid. <laughs> Here, Don. Don, have a donut. Have a donut and some of this sweet cider. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll have a glass of that myself. Pretty strong, Jack. Strong? Let me taste this. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, Rochester! <laughs> yes, boy! <laughs> what did you put in this cider? A little Central Avenue vitamin! <laughs> Jim in there. Now, now throw that cider out the window. You ain't gonna throw mine out. Dennis, you're not drinking any hard cider. You're a baby kangaroo. Oh, I can't hop on milk. <laughs> Let Don hop. Now you get back in that pouch. Okay. See you later, fellas. <laughs> I'll stay there. Gee, I, I wish Phil would get here so we can go oh, ahead. Oh, uh, Jack, look who's coming. Where? Oh, yes, it's Mr. Billingsley. Look, he's dressed like Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Oh, uh... Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Having a little party, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, uh, you're dressed as Marie Antoinette. Are you going to a masquerade? No, my head aches, so I'm going to have it cut off. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, I... I thought you were celebrating Halloween like we are. You see, I'm Satan, and Miss Livingston is Pocahontas, and Mr. Wilson is a kangaroo. I used to be an alligator once, and now I'm an old bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, see you later. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> Strange fellow. The other morning for breakfast, he swallowed a raw egg and then drank boiling water for three minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's Phil. Come on in, Phil. Hi, you, Jackson. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Phil. Hi. Hi. I'm glad you got here, Phil. We want to get going. I'm sorry, but I didn't have time to put no costume on. Don't worry. Your tailor takes care of that. <laughs> Hey, Phil, uh, what, uh, what happened between you and the teacher? Oh, she got mad at me when we were having our spelling lesson. 
Oh, what is the trouble? You asked me to spell Pomeranian. Pomeranian? No, I said D-O-G. Take it or leave it. <laughs> well, at least you knew Pomeranian was a dog. That's something, huh? Well, we're all here, so come on, fellas. Let's go. Hey, Don, you put on a lot of weight since last week. That's Dennis. It's a long story. <laughs> Uh, come on, everybody, let's go. Oh, Rochester, Rochester, before you leave, be sure and lock the garage so that nobody damages the Maxwell. Okay. Remember last year, some kid got in there and turned it over. Yeah, we drove around for three days without even noticing. <laughs> I noticed it. It was bumpy as anything. All right, this way, fellas, we'll all go out the side door. Oh, that's... Boy, we really, we really have fun tonight. You know, kids, first we'll go next door to Ronald Coleman's house. See? And then we'll Jack, go... Jack, here comes that little boy you hired as a gag man. Let's take him along. Oh, Belly Laugh Barton, eh? <laughs> ah, hello, kid. Hello, Mr. Benny. Say, Belly, do you uh, want to go out with us tonight? We're going to ring doorbells and raise the dickens. You're a little adolescent, aren't you, bub? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll enjoy ourselves. Sorry you won't come along. By the way, how's the uh, program coming along for Sunday? If I tell you, you won't have any fun tonight. <laughs> well, get busy and concentrate. Come on, fellas. Now, I'll tell you what, kids. First, we'll sneak across the lawn to Ronald Coleman's house and put some white paint on the doorknob, see? Then we'll ring the bell, and when he comes out, we'll run like the dick. Coleman's bell three times. Why doesn't he come out? Maybe he went to a party or something. Couldn't be a big party or I'd have been invited. <laughs> Ronnie and I attend the same affairs. Only he doesn't have to crawl in the window. <laughs> well, these Hollywood parties, who knows whether you got an invitation or not. <laughs> hey, fellas, I've got an idea. As long as Coleman isn't home, let's take this beautiful sundial here and put it over on my front lawn. His sundial? Yeah, it'll be a swell gag. Three years ago, you took a flagpole. When's the gag over? <laughs> oh, get in the Halloween spirit, will you? Come on, fellas. Give me a hand with this dial. Hey, Jack, look. There's a policeman walking by the house. A policeman? Uh-oh. Hello there. Is that you, Mr. Coleman? Get this, fellas. Uh, right, Joe. Say frosting, old boy. Tell me, decent of you. Good night. Hip, hip. <laughs> I, I certainly fooled the blighter. Take that donut out of your eye. You're not Coleman anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. Say, hey, fellas, we'll never budge this sundial. It's too heavy. I'll have to phone for some movers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Look, let's, let's go over to Basil Rathbone's. Does he live near here, Jackson? Yeah, right past my house on the other side of the street. Come on. Ooh. I'm this pale I keep tripping on. <laughs> hmm, look at that light in my kitchen. Belly laugh is in there eating me out of house and home. <laughs> All the writers with ulcers, and I had to get him. <laughs> hey, 
Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Jack, look at this. Where? Hey, wait a minute. Who wrote this on my sidewalk? Jell-O has that new locked-in flavor. The flavor never goes away. We put it in and it's there to stay. Who did this? Don't look at me. Kangaroo can't write. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, Don, you go get a rag and wipe it off. I'll tell the sponsor. All right, the big fat paddle tail. Leave it there. <laughs> now, follow me. Follow me across the street, fellas. And we'll go to Rathbone's house. Quiet now. We will fix him good. Which house is it, Jackson? Wait a minute. I don't know whether this is Rathbone's house or the next one. I think it's this one. No, no, it's the next one. This is where Charles Boyer lives. Oh, that's right. Say, let's pull some gag on him. Yeah, maybe he's got a sundial we can lift. <laughs> now, I'll just sneak up and ring his doorbell. Wait here, fellas. Hey, Jackson, Mick, here comes that cop again. Uh-oh. Hello there. Is that you, Mr. Boyer? Here I go again, fellas. Oh, good evening, officer. <laughs> Beautiful night. Beautiful. Yes, it is. Good night, Mr. Boyer. Bon Sawyer. <laughs> hmm. Lucky I can speak French. <laughs> hey, Jack, let's get away from here. The policeman's liable to come back. He might have said, I'll tell you what. Let's go through this driveway and sneak over to Bathroom's backyard. Now, follow me, fellas. Everybody quiet. <laughs> Here we are. See, it's dark tonight. Hey, where did Phil disappear to? I don't know. Where is he, Don? He was with us a minute ago. Have you seen him, Dennis? He's not in here. <laughs> of course not. Here he comes now. Where have you been, Phil? Boy, am I wet. Why didn't you tell me that Rathbone had a swimming pool? Well, why don't you watch where you're going? I've swallowed enough water to last me the rest of my life. Well, it didn't hurt you to go in the wagon, even for a second. <laughs> now, wait here, kid. I'm going up and knock on the door. When Rathbone comes out, hide in the bushes. Wow, will he be furious? Oh, be careful now, Jack. Don't worry about me. Now, quiet. Get ready, fellas. Don those milk bottles. I hope I didn't cut myself. Am I bleeding, Mary? With what? <laughs> With blood, I've got it. The idea of leaving... Wasn't I just went on, Jack? Quick, pick me up. Here comes Rathbone. Now, quiet, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Who's there? Anybody there? I say, is anybody there? Ah, must be some of those Halloween pranksters. Now, look here, you children. I don't want any more of this disturbance. I've got to get up early in the morning. I'm making a picture. What a ham. <laughs> While I catch you around here again tonight, I'll give you all a sound good thrashing. Now, go away, all of you. Cat. <laughs> oh, boy, is he, is he burned up. Boy, am I going to make his life miserable tonight. Wait a minute. What do you got against Rathbone? Jack hates him because he can act. <laughs> That's all. I can see him imitate Boyer like I did. Now, fellas, this time I'm going to grab this big rock here and throw it up against the door. Oh, you can't take those steps again, eh, Daddy? <laughs> now, I can climb, only this will be more annoying. Now, here goes. I'm going to throw the rock. One. Phil, what are you doing back there? Nothing. Well, get away. <laughs> Two. Three. Go. Holy smoke, I broke a window. There goes the porch light again. Quick, fellas, run. He's coming out. Whoop. Well, I'll be... Hey, what is this? Come on, Jack, hurry! Run, run! I can't run. That darn Phil Harris tied my tail to this bush. <laughs> Gee, what a spot. I hope Rathbone doesn't see me. Did I ever get my hands on this? Ah! Who's hiding there? Who's in back of that bush? Hmm. Right now, I'd give $1,000 to be playing Salt Lake City. (laughs) 
Hey, here he comes. Well, may I inquire the name of the moron behind that mask who goes around breaking windows? Who are you? Gee. Come, 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 man. Speak up. <laughs> ah, Basil, I'm only making the job. It is me, Charles Boyer. Mr. Benny, your accent is revolting. <laughs> Basil? Hello, how'd you know it was me? You wore that same costume last Halloween when you tipped over my jog house. Oh. I want that jog back. Where is he? <laughs> well, he had pups today. You're a fine Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> now, look, Basil. I'm sorry I threw that rock. It was an accident. Accident or no accident, you'll pay for that window. All right, all right. I'll pay for it. I'm Mr. Benny. What are you doing, then? I'm untying my tail. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> I'm very sorry about the whole thing, Basil. I won't bother you anymore tonight. I'll go and join my gang. I suppose you're going to continue this mischievous business. Well, well, listen. To tell you the truth, we're going over to Charles Lawton's house. You know those flower pots he's got on his front porch? Yes. Well, listen, we're going to tip him over one by one. He'll go crazy when he hears that racket. I dare say, Lawton is a fierce temper. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Basil. Happy Halloween. Goodbye. Lawton House, eh? Telephone. Wait a minute, Jack, old boy, I'm going with you. <laughs> what? You got to join us? I'll uh, tell my wife. Uh, that's later, darling. Hey, fellas, have I got a surprise for you. Come on, Basil. Yippee! Here, listen, well, here's what we'll do. First, we'll go to Lawton House. Then we'll go over to Claudette Colbert's and ring the doorbell, see? And when she comes out, I'll grab her and kiss her. And you can kiss her, too. For three grand puddings. Jello chocolate, jello vanilla, and jello butterscotch pudding. Three delicious desserts made by the same people who make world famous jello. Jello puddings are puddings that even grandma would be proud to serve. Puddings that really taste homemade. Yet they take only just a few minutes to make. With jello puddings, all you have to do is add milk and bring to a boil. Then cool and serve. And there, almost before you know it, You've made the family a smooth, creamy pudding with a flavor unsurpassed by any pudding you ever tasted. So don't wait another day to try these luscious desserts. Try all three flavors real soon. Rich, mellow chocolate, creamy vanilla, and golden butterscotch. You'll find them all equally delightful. And you'll want to keep them handy on your pantry shelf all the time. Tomorrow, order Jell-O puddings and see if you don't say they're just like grandma's only more so. This is the last number of the fifth program in the current Jello series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Mr. Rathbone for appearing on our program tonight. Also, at this time, I would like to announce that the motion picture drive for the community chess this year starts tomorrow, November 3rd. I'm sure that all of us here in Hollywood will do our bit. And I hope all of you will contribute to your local chapters. Good night, everybody. Friends, the name Jell-O is a sure sign of goodness wherever you find it. Whether it's on a package of Jell-O or on a package of Jell-O pudding. Jell-O puddings are made by the same folks who make Jell-O. And like Jell-O, they're downright swell. They're simply unrivaled for smooth, luscious flavor. They're easy to prepare just as Jell-O is. And they sell for the same low Jell-O price. So tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, get Jell-O puddings in all three flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. Remember Jell-O and Jell-O puddings. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles.